<laughs> you think Steve Smith would allow that? You think Steve Smith seeing after everything that they just went through on this Thursday night football game and before that, you think he would allow the Baltimore Ravens to even think about trading for Jerry Judy? Oh, man, if they even thought about it, Steve Smith Sr. would be on a first flight to BWI and shut that whole thing down. But let's get to my guy's question. First one came from my guy, Alex. He said Hey, Graven, hope you and the family are doing well. Hey, we are doing great. I, I, I got a lot of love for you and appreciation for you, Alex. And let's get into it. He said, I wanted to ask about your thoughts about Rashad Bateman and his situation. Throughout his career, he has battled with injuries and has never gotten over a thousand yard season. And he doesn't seem to be living up to that Minnesota version of Bate that we saw in college. And it just seems like he has turned into a bust. I know that he had one bad game. You can't really judge him for that. But with the Broncos rumored to be up for trading Jerry Judy, do you think we should take this opportunity and get a wide receiver that has proven hands? Jerry Judy proven hands? Whoa. What? I, look, I love Jerry Judy. I do. But proven hand? Oh, look. but let's get into it. He said, a wide receiver that has proven hands and route running skills for bait and maybe a fourth round pick. Hold up now. Because Bateman got those same things that you saying that Jerry Judy got. Jerry Judy can run all the routes in the world, but Bateman can too. Jerry Judy hands, they could be a little shaky. Bateman's can too. So he said, I don't really have anyone to talk about the Ravens with, and I thought I might just throw the question out there just because. He said, anyway, have a good day. Hey, Alex, you have an even better one. Now, with, with Jerry Judy, like I, I just feel like it would be not a lot. I feel like it would almost be a lateral move if they traded Rashad Bateman for Jerry Judy. So, and I know that I've seen some people saying, oh, man, well, but, but Jerry Judy, he, he already knows Lamar. He's friends with Lamar. He's from South Florida, too. Yeah, he's from Deerfield Beach. Uh, so, yeah, he will fit right in. Yeah, he will fit right in with the Florida Ravens. Hey, so that, that part right there, I ain't got no problem with that, but y'all already know me. Um, but you, you, you said that you feel like Rashad Bateman uh, is almost entering the bus territory. Uh, but I, I feel like if you feel that way about Rashad Bateman, do you feel that way about Jerry Judy as well? Because I know he's he's had his struggles, too, uh, at the wide receiver position. He's had his troubles staying healthy from time to time. He's had his tr problems with drops and whatnot. He's had a lack of production, too. So I, I don't feel like the Ravens should trade for Jerry Judy. I wouldn't mind Jerry Judy on the Ravens. But I feel like if they were to trade Rashad Bateman for Jerry Judy, that it, it just I, I don't think it would really make sense. Next question came from my guy Plex, who has been a Team Keep It Clean patron for a while now. But he said, uh, same old, same old. Defense held up for as long as they could. I can't fault them at all. I watched a receiver that we should have drafted give us that work when the player we drafted instead was inactive. Oof, ooh. Yikes. Uh, he said, our receivers had a horrible game. I believe there were eight drops. Four could have been touchdowns. Mark, Bate, Nelson, and I believe Zay scores if he doesn't fall. Lamar has to stop fumbling. Uh, but I can't be mad at him when there's strip sacks when he's about to throw. Uh, tackles should block better. But Filele against TJ Watt, it is what it is. Ronnie, on the other hand, my goodness. But more than anything, this was the type of loss we consistently have. Boom. That right there. Uh, failure to execute and su suspect coaching decisions. Munkin didn't call a bad game. He sure didn't. The, the, the ball just kept dropping out of the receiver's hands. Munkin can't do nothing about that. Uh, he said that possession after the recovered fumble was suspect. Oh, you talking about after the, uh, after the fumble on special teams? Uh, but anyway, he said, but it shouldn't have come down to that. Drops aside, had we taken the field goal before the half, we're up five as opposed to two, and we would have forced them to need a touchdown. Well, I mean, you know the whole fumble. I mean, the whole not taking the field goal story with old Tyler Linderbaum saying, I got this. But anyway, um, I mean, they scored a touchdown anyway, but defensive play calling would have been different. I said it last year. It's that time for Harbaugh. He didn't cause drops and yada, yada, yada. But we have multiple losses like this every year, and I'm tired of it. Nobody goes undefeated, but we beat ourselves over and over, and that has to fall on the head coach. But what do I know? I'm just a fan at the end of the ball watching the game. Oh, my guy, ain't forget about them end of the ball comments. I don't really think any fans did. It might slip your mind sometimes here and there, but I don't think you truly forgot about it. But anyway, he also said... Tyler said that the fourth and two was on him. He saw a player jump and snapped the ball. He should not have been put in that position. Story time. I have a four-year-old. Recently, he wrote on the wall with a Sharpie and cut the clothes he was wearing with scissors. I've taught him better than that. He knows not to do that, but at the end of the day, the Sharpie shouldn't have been out, and he shouldn't have had easy access to the scissors. That's on me. Send the kicking team out there from the jump. That's on Harbaugh. Oof. I love a good analogy. I, I I love that. And I really appreciate the way that you broke that down like perfectly. Perfecter than perfect, even though perfecter ain't even a word. But it should be just because of how you broke everything down just now. 
Zay's first touchdown. Next question came from my guy Simeon. He said, Dan Graven, hope you and the family are doing great. Not so much a question here, but more of a prediction. And I know your question from Sub's video will be after the Steelers game because he sent this before. Uh, so we'll already know that how this went down. But I had a dream last night that Zay went up high. Unlikely with his size, I know, but we'll see. And snagged his first touchdown as a Raven to put us... 14-0 uh, against the Steelers. Uh, let's see if it comes true. I hope he gets one soon. He deserves it. As a bonus, I'm feeling 31-15 Ravens as the score. Hey, look, you should have been right. You 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 should have been right with all of that. But, I mean, all them drops, you know how it went. He said, also, with being from the UK, I'm going to see us play the Titans next week. And I'm so hyped for it. I was planning to save up to see them at the bank someday after Hobbs said he didn't want to go back to London anytime soon after that last trip there. So I'm glad he changed his mind on that one. Oh, well, maybe NFL, they changed his mind for him on that one. Uh, he said, win or lose, I know I'm going to have an amazing day, but I have faith we can get the win. I, I, I think the Ravens should be able to. Now, me, I think um, for the Baltimore Ravens to really get back on track, in my opinion, and this don't even sound crazy to me. It may sound so crazy to some of y'all, but I think they need to have a Dolphins-Broncos type of game. Not even necessarily 70 points, but for Ravens to really get their confidence back and really get their swagger back and get back on point, they need to put up like almost 50, and the Titans need to have like 15 or 20. It, it, this game does not need to be close, and Ravens need to look absolutely unstoppable for them to be back on point, in my opinion. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, what I want to say about that game is not team, keep it clean, friendly. And I have a lot of questions, but I know they'll be answered from other subscribers' questions. So my simple question is this. Do you think Dove should get more snaps? Because Dove, he's not dropping passes. Um, well, Dove, yeah, I mean, couldn't hurt. It, it, it couldn't hurt. And I mean, with Odell Beckham Jr. hurt, I think that Odell Beckham Jr. should rest until he's like all the way, all the way ready to go. Not limping, not dragging along. I feel like he needs to be all the way ready to go. Because, uh, I mean, he ain't dropping passes either, but he just, again, he seems real hobbled. And he said, uh, do you think we should have paid D-Hop instead of OBJ? <laughs> you know, now D-Hop was always my first. That was always my guy. Uh, that was always the, the receiver that I really, really, really wanted the Ravens to always get. It came close to happening before, then it didn't happen. Uh, then it uh, seemed like it, we had rumors that it was close again, but it, it didn't happen again. So he would have always been my priority uh, over Odell Beckham Jr. Now, I, I ain't had no problem with Odell Beckham Jr. signing now. Uh, but D-Hop was always, always, always uh, my number one guy. Uh, and he also said, heading into week six, how many excuses are we going to keep making about this team getting it together? Oh, um... They, they just got to stop being their own worst enemy. That, that, that's the biggest thing with them. Uh, he also said, apparently, Broncos are clearing house according to rumors. Should EDC make a call about Jerry Judy? Okay. <laughs> he said, rumors in sports talk shows are saying we should make a move for Saquon Barkley. What are your thoughts on that? Me personally, I would love to see the move, and I take back what I said about getting Jerry Judy because he's a no-show. And if Steve Smith Sr. says you trash, then you trash, LOL. Oh, I can't call him trash, man. Um, and Steve Smith Sr., man, those, those comments, boy, they, oof, that, that's, that's tough, man. Man, that's tough like to call somebody just a guy oh that's oh that's that's rough but anyway uh with jerry judy again i like if they just added jerry judy like straight up and he they welcomed him with the receiver that the ravens already got hey cool but who are you taking off are you trading away devin duvernay uh who a lot of ravens fans have just been wondering like oh what's gonna happen with him uh what, what are you gonna give up to get a uh, jerry judy i just don't think that would be the move where it's like unless you like giving away like a fifth or sixth round pick something like oh, okay whatever but if you're giving up significant draft capital so I, I just don't think that would be the move that they need to do to really put them over the top Next question came from Hunter. He said, trade Stanley. Ooh, engraving. Thank you for always having such great content and keeping us up to date on all things Ravens. What are your thoughts on the Ravens trading Ronnie Stanley in the offseason for a bona fide edge rusher or a couple of draft picks? Whoa. <laughs> um, I have to see how the contract breaks down. But it would be something that, uh, well, Ronnie Stanley, because it's just, it's been a lot of the same stuff, man. Um, he's just been hurt a lot, and he's obviously gets paid a lot of money. But with Ronnie Stanley, uh, it's like even, but when he's there, it's like, hold up, Ronnie Stanley, are, are you the same guy? Are you the same player that you used to be? And I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Now, I'm not this big offensive line guru or anything like that. I'm sure some other people could tell you more about Ronnie Stanley in more detail than I could. But we've seen a lot of times where people just, just beating Ronnie Stanley, like straight up, just whooping and dogging him. And I'm like, whoa, 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 Ronnie Stanley, what's up, baby? What's going on? So if the Ravens traded him... If his, if his contract allowed it, they've done a lot of restructures. Every time they restructure, Ronnie Stanley's one of the first people they go to. So I don't even know if he's trade a bowl, but if it did come to time where they could actually get his contract off the books in a clean way, 
then I, I think it could be a move that the Ravens would think about because Ronnie Stanley is like hardly ever available for him. And he said it rubs me the wrong way that he said that he won't play until he's 100%. There's no player in the NFL that's 100% healthy and not banged up. So why does he get to decide that he has to be 100% before he's out there? I know he's one of the best linemen in the game right now, but it seems he doesn't have the mentality of a true Raven anymore. I don't know, maybe maybe he just he just don't want to hurt himself or injure himself further. Uh, he just want to play it extra extra safe. I'm not sure what it is, but something's got to give this heel Ronnie Stanley. Next question came from my guy BB. He said, "Honestly, this game against Pittsburgh reminded me of the playoff game against the Titans. The only thing different was Lamar had Hollywood Brown. Uh, there is not an excuse for this wide receiver core. Did Ravens waste well needed money on these players that continually get injured and their inability to be playmakers? Also, well, before we get to this next part." I We'll see. After five weeks, um, Nelson Aguilar has been worth the, and it was a small investment for him, um, but he's been worth it. Uh, Zay Flowers has been worth the first round draft pick. Odell Beckham Jr. thus far, no, not yet. Uh, we just, we got to be honest about it. Not yet. Hasn't been worth the 15 mil yet. Um, hopefully, as the season progresses, he will be, but so far, no, not yet. And Rashad Bateman, um, he's also had a rough start to this season so far. But hopefully both of those guys can turn it around, man. Hopefully they can both turn it around. And he said, why haven't the Ravens made it important protecting Lamar and drafting a left tackle to replace the always injured Ronnie Stanley? See, look at that. Team Keep It Clean be on point. Like, they'd they be, they be on point with the, the, the thoughts and whatnot and, and, and just what they be thinking about. Um, he said, uh, not trying to be negative, but the moves they aren't making are holding this city back from a championship. Uh, so, with Ronnie Stanley, I think that's what we were talking about before with the contract, with his money. He makes a lot of money. So, Ravens have a lot of money invested into him. So, it's like, if you got that much money invested into him, then you're in a tricky spot. Uh, even though, yeah, he gets hurt a lot. He missed a lot of time. Um, you're in a tricky spot because that's your guy. That's your left tackle. Uh, and you don't want to invest more money into the left tackle position or more significant money into the left tackle position because you already got a lot invested into him and you want him to be that guy. Uh, and he said, is Harbaugh really that important or are the Ravens scared to make a change or scared to hold him accountable? Your thoughts? Um, I think we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see this year. Uh, depending on how things go, depending on how things change, even going into this London game. We'll see. Like, it's a lot uh, is riding on this season, in my opinion, and it should be. Um, but all eyes need to eyes need to be opened. That that's my point. Eyes need to be open. Uh, people f way at the top, past Harbaugh, need to really be looking at this thing. Like, hey, we got this guy, that guy, that guy. We got another, got a nice roster, got a nice squad. We need to be getting the most out of them. The draft turnover is crazy. Next question came from my guy Sadari, and he said, "Hey, Graven, hope you and the family are doing well. Shout out for all the love on the live videos as well. Oh no, no, I appreciate you always coming through to the live streams, man." He said, "I may be overanalyzing this right now, but I'm starting to notice that EDC's draft picks don't have any longevity. So far, only two players that EDC has drafted have received extensions: Justice Hill and Broderick Washington. And no first rounders have had their fifth year option picked up. Uh, with the way that things are currently looking, Bateman and Away aren't going to get their options picked up either." Especially with Kyle Hamilton and Linda Baum coming up after next season. Also, a lot of players from EDC's draft don't even play for the Ravens anymore via trade or release. Hill was the only player retained from his first draft in 2019. And currently, Broderick Washington is the only one from the 2020 draft class. Well, uh, ain't Patrick Green 2020, right? I'm pretty sure he was. Anyway, he said, I know the draft shouldn't be the only way to build a team, but EDC is creating a bad pattern of not being able to keep his picks beyond their rookie deal. Some don't even make it past their rookie season. I will give him credit for cutting his losses and getting a good return for players that don't work out, though. And he said the 2019 draft class, Hollywood Brown traded. Um, Miles Boykin released. Justice Hill extended. Ben Powers priced himself out. Eamon Marshall, he said, Ghost released. Dalen Mack released. Trace McSorley released. 2020 draft class, Patrick Queen, possible extension or price out. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, we'll see. Matt Abike, we'll see. Devin Duvernay, we'll see. Linebacker Malik Harrison, we'll see. Tyree Phillips released. Ben Bredesen traded. Broderick Washington extended. James Prochet released. Geno Stone released and resigned as a free agent. <laughs> then resigned again. So, yeah. Gino. So, yeah. Uh, uh, with Eric DaCosta, yeah, the, the draft turnover is, is, is shaky. So, hopefully, m moving forward, he can get not only retain more draft picks, but really get more impact from them. Volume and passing. Next question came from my guy, and He said, the bright side about the Steelers game is that Munkin and Lamar were dialing it up in the pass game. Perfect throws just drops. In my opinion, that's the growing pain. This is the most Lamar pass in a single game this season. The receivers just need to get to work and to do their job, which I know they can. This was OBJ and Bateman's first game back. Imagine our future once they are clicking. Yeah, and we've been having that conversation for a little while now. Now, I know it's just week five. Well, it's week six now. 
Um, so we, we, we talk about just imagine once they really get it going, it's going to be nice. But when are they going to get it going? Because that game was a perfect opportunity to have it going. I mean, Lamar had everything on point. The receivers were getting open, and that is a big part of the game right there. But you got to finish in order to be the best you can possibly be. Just catch the ball, baby. Is Lamar too soft or friendly as a leader to get the Ravens over the hump? Next question came from my guy Joshua. He said, hey, Engraven, great job as always with the channel. Keep up the great work and positivity. No, I appreciate you, and I appreciate these thought-provoking questions that you continue to ask. He said, after watching that horrendous Ravens Steelers game, I'm beginning to think that Lamar doesn't have the mentality needed to push this team to the Super Bowl. Yes, the drop passes were on the receivers, the slips, the route mishaps, the bad O-line, all that is on them. But I don't see him vocalizing frustration or calling his guys higher uh, or getting in their face to be better. Can you imagine if the receivers and linemen played like that, played that bad with Tom Brady? They would get an earful. I have this same exact criticism of Justin Herbert. Mahomes, Hurts, uh, Rod, oh, excuse me. I read it wrong. I have the same exact criticism of Justin Herbert, period. And he said, Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Aaron Rodgers, even Tua seem to call their guys to a high standard. Some QBs like Lamar are just trying to be cool with everyone. Keeping your teammates accountable is part of leadership and motivation. Not tossing your helmet and then moping off the sideline to complain with Tyler Huntley. Am I overthinking or is he really too soft to ever get the Ravens to greatness? I wouldn't call him soft. Um, I do know Lamar Jackson. He does not like throwing people under the bus. Um, and he as we, we've seen little clips in he, here and there and whatnot when Lamar Jackson, like if a player messes up, he'll like tap him on the head right or real quick or something like that. It'd be like, oh, you, you, you got it. You're going to get it. Um, is he the type to get all in your face? And, hey, you need to tighten up, man. Come on, let's get it. Fix it. Fix this. Get this right. Is he that type of person? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't say. I don't think. We've really seen that from I, we've seen him get heated before. Like um, we've seen him get mad at Patrick Ricard when oh what was it that happened? I forgot what happened. We've seen him go off on Ronnie Stanley here and there. But to, yeah, I, I, I know, and I've seen other people say this too. They they want to see Lamar hold more people accountable. But is he doing? Do we know if he's doing it or not? We can only see what we see on TV. We can only see what we see on the broadcast. I'm not saying he is doing it. I'm not saying he isn't doing it. But I'm saying we just we don't know. We don't know. Um, so we don't know what type of conversations that Lamar Jackson is having with his receivers in private. We don't know what kind of conversations he's having with his receivers off camera. Well, from what we do see, yeah, it seems like they all buddy buddy and whatnot, which is great. Uh, but uh, I know a lot of Ravens, they want to see more rah rah in your face and whatnot. Because uh, I know Ravens fans are for, always and forever spoiled by guys like Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. Because, oh, God, they'll tell you about yourself. <laughs> they'll tell you about yourself big time. Now, will Lamar tell you about yourself? Now, I, I wonder if he's thinking like, Man, if I tell these guys about myself, they're already down in the dumps. If I tell them about themselves, is that going to put them down even more? Um, or, or could it e end up raising them up? I, I don't know what he's thinking. And, and again, we don't know everything that he's doing. We, only, we can only go by what we see. Uh, so hopefully they are holding each other accountable and whatnot. Um, but hey, maybe that's what Odell Beckham Jr. is for. Uh, maybe he was here not only to be a playoff receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, but somebody that could help with the leadership aspect of Baltimore as well. Next question came from my guy Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good, bro? It's your boy Flirt Nowinski back again. Hope all is well with you and yours. Oh, everything is great. He said, kind of in small response to your Bateman video, bro. I do agree. People got to take it easy, man. He's had solid games all season. It's early, but still, the man has been through enough already. Football brings him peace, bro. Nobody's complaining about the front office not providing help at O-line. Tackles are getting <laughs> abused. And newsflash, everybody in the playoffs have edge rushes. No shade to them, but I'm just being real. Nobody's complaining about McDonald going cover Z with a DB that just came back off injury against one of the best young duos in the NFL with no help over the top. Ooh, that was rough. Mm, mm, mm. And he said, uh, knowing in that situation they had to take that shot, nobody is complaining about the wide receiver coach that had them catching rugby balls. That makes zero sense when a rugby ball is close to a pointed basketball. Okay, he had a bad game, so what? Burrow had a bad three games. Nobody was coming for his head. Support your team. Don't tear them down, man. But on a lighter note, it's, uh, it's something I noticed, and I don't know if you notice it too, but on all third and longs, they do this route with Dude where he runs to the middle uh, of the field, gets to the first down, throttles down, and Lamar bombs it to him. He jumps up in triple coverage and always has a good shot at the ball. They have been doing that with him since he was a rookie, and he's caught more of those than he dropped. Why have they not tried that with any of the bigger guys in the preseason, like the 6'4 guys? LOL. Dude has house for sure. Just always wondered that. On all, oh, I, I, I noticed that on the, um, like, when the game, went, like, when they really need some yards, they really need a chunk of yards, and it's like the end of the second quarter or the, the end of the half or toward the end of the uh, fourth quarter. And they be doing that with Duvernay. They did it in this last game against the Steelers. 
Like Duvernay ran to the first down marker. Lamar threw it to him, and Duve he didn't he didn't really. I can't call it a drop because he got whacked. He was like in the middle of traffic, and Lamar got it in there. Lamar hit Duve in the hands, but Duve just got whacked. So I can't call that a drop. But yeah, they they be doing that in them clutch clutch time situations. All right, he said last but not least. I know it's early, but do you think it's time to hit the panic button with these tackles? Oh, oh yeah, we already panicking. We scared. We we real scared. We were just talking about it earlier. As I said before, I'm all for supporting our players, but I'm just being real. I've watched them get blown by while blocking seven against a four man rush. That's cause for panic, bro. Every time the game is on the line, we have one second to pass, and Lamar is getting hit. Just me personally, we have to make some changes in quick because this isn't going to fly come playoff time, as we've seen before. It's cool having one of the most electric players in the NFL quarterback, but if he can't be a quarterback, it's all pointless. That's just me. What do you think? Oh, no, I think every Ravens fan would agree with you. It's been scary at the tackle position. We talked about with Ronnie Stanley. There's such a big investment there, uh, but he's been struggling a lot, in my opinion, and, and, and clutch time. Um, and there have been in moments like both tackles, and whether it's Morgan Moses or Pat McCarry, whoever it might be, Daniel Falele, where they just get blown by, like blown by, like whoosh. Like, where they don't even put up a fight against these defensive ends. And these some of the defensive ends are amazing. I get that. But still, it's, it's, it's been rough. So, with Lamar, with your quarterback, if he ain't got no time, then that could ruin the play before it even gets started. Not too early to feel like, ooh. Next question came from my guy, Rodell. He said, what's up, my guy? I ain't seen one in a minute. But you know I'm tuned in. Appreciate you, man. Uh, he said, man, oh, man, it's a ton of ball to play. But this feels too familiar. I know it's extremely early. However, this is still the same old Ravens. Shout out to Eric Guedo. Uh, he said, the same Ravens that take you as high as Antonio Brown just to let you down. The same Ravens that play down to weaker opponents. Yeah, that's them for sure. The same Ravens that beat themselves. Well, I got to agree with you there. Uh, the same Ravens that can't take that next step. You can make an extremely great argument that we should be 5-0. and You could. You could easily make that, easily make that argument. But they're not. And he said, and the best team in the AFC. In our two losses, we didn't lose to our opponents. We lost to ourselves. And look, I'm all for giving the opponents credit. Y'all know that I, I, I do that all day because uh, they deserve credit. And yeah, shout out to the Colts and shout out to the Steelers because they took, took care of business. But Ravens made it so easy for them. Ravens made it easy. Ravens like, oh, we don't want to win this game. Here, take it. Take it. But anyway, he said it's extremely sad but not surprising. To win one, to lose one is mediocre. I truly believe five games in that we are an average team right now despite an above average record. I agree. Uh, take one step forward to then take a step or two back is the definition of the Baltimore Ravens right now. When will we be a truly dominant team? That's what we all waiting for. We, we all waiting for that. Ravens have a thing where they talk about they love winning ugly. I appreciate it because my guy Jose and Brody brought this up. Jose and Brody from Lunch Break Hot Take. Um, but they talk about how John Harbaugh always talks about they, they love winning ugly. It's not pretty, but it's the Ravens, something like that. But it's it's like, hold up. You, you got a team. You should be blowing a lot of teams out. You should. Ravens are underachieving right now. They've been underachieving for a while. But with the talent that they got, who, who they are, they should be a much better football team. Now, again, it's still early. It's only after week five. We're going into week six. But Ravens should be doing a whole lot better than they have been. So hopefully they get there soon. He said, not saying we should win all 17, but the teams that you should beat, you have to. We cannot continue to play down to weaker opponents. This is not all coaching. This is not just players. This is an entire franchise. I can't get excited if we blow out Tennessee just to play down to the next opponent or the following. Uh, I do fear the potential of a typical Ravens season where we win a good amount of games, lose a handful to the teams we should beat, squeak into the playoffs to make no noise, and make week one mistakes. The only thing I'm not sure of is who will be to blame until we dominate teams who are weaker show consistency and make noise in the playoffs this will continue to feel like a national football loop that we continue to watch for the highs and lows of the baltimore ravens hashtag please don't let this be another year of the same thing now uh what would you say uh, as long as the baltimore ravens have been going through this 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 sort of loop this sort of cycle what would you say is the one thing that has not changed 